Morning, Brendan. All right, good morning. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you're doing well. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, we have an exam and um, it was like a unanimous decision um, to have exam 6-1 rather than 5-5. So that exam 6-1 will be on Monday at 8 a.m. Um, also, lesson 6-1 is due at 9 o'clock on Tuesday. So I do realize there's a lot of AP testing going on. And so I'm trying to um, chill out as much as possible. So um, anyhow, and at the same time, I'm still trying to help you enhance your grade because uh, May 22nd is the last day for seniors. So I'm trying to get as many tests in as I can um, just to help you out. Um, today, I'm going to teach a new lesson on 7-5. So we're going to go back to some algebra now and leave the trigonometry. Um, so if you need help or you want to do some type of review this weekend, um, make sure you notify me. Um, but the, just make sure that you're ready for 6-1 on Monday. It should be one of the easier exams. Uh, so that, that's why I wanted to do it. Um, it's way easier than 5.5, so um, let me know if, if you uh, need assistance um, with 6.1. All right, so today we're going to skip over to uh, 7.5. So 7.5, we're going back to some algebra, and we're going to start out with some algebra one stuff. So um, I'm hoping. Uh, that we can take an exam on this because I think this will also be an easier um, exam, but um, I need to teach four objectives and I don't know how many I'm going to get through today. Um, we'll just see how it goes. So. Also, you know, uh, I know that lesson 6.1 is due tomorrow, but if you've been overwhelmed with AP tests, uh, make sure make sure you contact me. Um, so we can talk because I'm being more lenient um, during this time because I do want your AP testing to take priority over over anything else. So, okay. So in 7.5, we're looking at systems of inequalities. So in algebra one, you had a system of equations. System just means more than one equation. So basically, in algebra one, you looked at linear systems. So basically you had a line and you looked at another line and that point of intersection was a solution. So let's say the answer was three, zero, that would be the solution. Um, in algebra one also, the lines could be parallel, which means no solutions. I think we've gone over this before when we solved, uh, I think we solved systems at another point when I was doing a review. Also, the lines can be the same line, which means infinite solutions in that system. So this was algebra one. Uh, like I said, this is one solution, three, zero, no solutions and infinite solutions. So we're gonna start um, with just a review of just graphing a line. I did do extensive reviews um, in first semester on this. Uh, but we didn't look at inequalities, but I did go over slope intercept form and um, solving for Y and putting it in the form Y equals MX plus B. Remember that? So M is the slope, um, the rise over the run. And um, I also taught you that if the equation is in standard form, the best thing to do is not solve for Y but use the X and Y intercepts. So I'll be going over this, but um, you set X equal to zero and you find Y, which would be the Y intercept, whatever that is. And then you set Y equal to zero and solve for X and that would give you the X intercept. And then what you do is you connect the two points to graph. 
a quick graph. So that's the whole objective here is we don't want to spend 12 hours trying to graph. We want to use the most efficient methods and the quickest methods to graph. All right, so let's get started here. So lesson 7.5 is solving systems of inequalities. So in this first objective, we're just going to graph an inequality. So we're not we're not working with a system yet. So they just want us to graph two x minus three y is greater than or equal to six. So this is the first time we've looked at graphing the inequality. And like I said, when you have something in standard form, you don't want to use slope intercept form. Uh, to graph this, what we're going to do is we're going to set X equal to zero and find the Y intercept. And we're going to set Y equal to zero and find the X intercept. Uh, and then we're going to connect the points. Okay, let me give you some steps here for graphing an inequality. Okay, so first of all, you want to graph the equation, not the inequality. So you want to graph an equation using slope intercept form. Or X and y intercepts. Not interps. Intercepts. Okay, so let me explain this really quick. Remember slope inter intercept form was y equals mx plus b. And in this form you solve for y. That m is the slope, it's the rise over the run, which is the change in y over the change in x. And B is where you start. That's the Y intercept. So zero up three, zero up four, zero down two, zero down one. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be explaining this again. All right, so the X and Y intercepts is what we're doing right now. This is where you set X equal to zero and you set Y equal to zero and you find the intercepts and connect the points. All right, the second steps in graphing these equalities is you have to decide if the line is solid or dotted. So here's a little table for you. If you have greater than or less than, the line is dotted. So that means the solutions cannot be on the line. If it's greater than or equal to, less than or equal to or equal to, the line is solid, which means the solutions can be on the line. And the third step I'll write over here so I don't get too low. You have to test a point. On either side of the line. Okay, so these are the steps that I'm going to follow. I wrote it over there so we can come over here, but I'm going to eventually make sure you have that written down um, because I'm going to erase that. Now, this is not a system. This is just a linear inequality. So we're going to graph it, and I'm going to be using the x and y intercept method because it's not easy to solve for y. We would have to subtract 2x, and we would have to divide by three, negative 3, and then we have to flip the symbol. So there's a lot of work, and we don't want to do it. So here's what you're going to do. When you set x equal to 0, you get negative 3y, and you could just use an equality. We don't care about the inequality right now. We're going to do the inequality down down further. So just use an equation. So two times zero makes that go away. So you have negative three y is, is 
equal to six. So in this equation, we would divide by negative three and we get y is equal to negative two. So that means that this line has a y-intercept of zero down two. I do recommend you write the ordered pair. So now when you set y equal to zero, negative three times zero goes away. So you end up with two x, don't worry about the inequality, just write equals six. The reason why we're not worried about the inequality is we're just finding points. So we don't need the inequality when we're finding points. So divide by two, x is equal to three. So the x-intercept is right three, zero. So once again, don't get these mixed up. x comes first, zero, down two. x comes first, right three, up zero. So we are done. And uh, we did step number one, and now we're going to graph it. Like I said, we are not graphing a system right now. We're just graphing a linear inequality. So we're going to go zero down two. That's the y-intercept. We go right three, zero. And all we do now is draw a line. Okay, now, if this was an equation, we're done. But it's not. It's an inequality. So now we go to step number two. Is the line dotted or solid? Well, let's see. We have greater than or equal to, so it means the line is sol solid. If it, won, if it was an inequality like one of these, we would have to dot the line. Okay, so now we go to step three. We have to test a point. So it's like a wall. You can test a point over here if you want. test a point over here. So let me just make this comment. Either all of these points work, see all these points? Or all of these points work. So if all of these points work, these are all going to fail. If all of these points work, all of these are going to fail. So pick any point you want. Like you could pick 100 down 100. I'm not going to do that. I always like to pick 0, 0 if I can. But you could pick 1, 0, 0 up 1, 0. Just don't pick a point on the line because we know that the points on the line work. So pick any point you want. 0 down 5, 0 down 100, right 2 down 70. I'm going to pick 0, 0. The only time you can't pick 0, 0 is when the line goes through zero, zero. All right, so here we go. And I'm gonna put it into my, my inequality. Now notice I'm gonna use the inequality now. So what we have here is two times zero minus three times zero. Is that greater than or equal to six? Now, if this is a true statement, we're gonna shade him and his friends. If it's a false statement, don't shade it. So it's real simple. Let's see what happens here. Two times zero, zero, minus three times zero, zero. Is zero greater than or equal to six? No. So that means do not shade him. So that means everybody over here is gonna fail. Zero of one is gonna fail, zero of two, right one up seven, right one up 100, left two up four. All of these are gonna fail and all of these going to shade because that means all of these work. So once again, if zero, zero is on this side of the line, if this is true, shade it and all his friends. If it's false, don't shade it. And don't means shade the other side of the wall. Okay, I hope that helps. That's probably the clearest I've ever explained it. Um, so hopefully, um, what I just illustrated to you was the X and Y intercept method. Um, I'm going to show you slope intercept form. We're still not into the systems yet. Does anybody have a question about this? All right. 
Well, you have done this now several times, so it probably makes more sense than ever before. So this isn't like the first time I've gone over this. You have had it before in Algebra 1. You have had it before with me in first semester. So seeing it again probably helps a lot. Okay, I hope you guys can see the boards okay. All right, so let's do another solving just a simple inequality. So we have y is greater than negative two thirds x. All right, this is absolutely slope intercept form. So we're not gonna do what we did on the last problem. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna find the slope and we're gonna find the y-intercept, which is actually zero, zero. So if you recall the slope is the rise over the run. Rise means y values, run means x values. So remember when I taught this, I had you write two of them. So this would be down two, right three, down two, right three, or up to left three. So these are equivalent. So say them with me, down to right three, down to right three, or up to left three, up to left three. All right, now the y-intercept is zero, and specifically it's the point zero, zero. So if I asked you for the intercept, you wouldn't say, oh, it's zero. You would say the intercept is zero, zero. So we're done. So when you graph it, you start with the inter with the uh, y intercept. And from there, I'm going to go up to left three, up to left three, up to left three. And notice I kind of ran out of room. Well, that's why we did the other one. So if you run out of room, you can use this one. So I'm going to go back to the origin. This time I'm going to go down to right three. And there's your line. Now, like I said, this is number one, slope intercept form. Um, notice that I didn't draw the inequality yet. I just drew, drew the equation. That's what I'm saying over here. I'm saying graph the equation. So now we decide, is the line dotted or solid? Well, this is greater than, so this line is dotted. And what does dotted mean? It means the solutions cannot be on the line, right? So they can come infinitely close to the line, but they cannot be on the line. Okay, so we've done one, we've done two, now we go to three and we test a point. Well, this time you can't test zero, zero because the line goes through zero, zero. So you cannot test that one. So you gotta test another point. So test any point you want. Test zero down one, test left one zero. I'm gonna test right one up one. So I'm gonna put a little mark here so I know which side of the line I'm on. So just, just to remember here, if this works, you're going to shade all his friends over here. If he fails, don't shade him. Don't shade anyone over there. You're going to shade on the other side of the line. So if this works, shade it. That means all those solutions, all those ordered pairs will work. And all of these will fail. Okay, here we go. So you put in, remember this is X and Y, so you put in a one for Y and you're asking yourself is one greater than negative two thirds times one plus zero. So is one greater than negative two thirds? Well, one's greater than a negative, right? So doesn't that mean that he works? So that means all of his friends are going to work. And if you don't believe me, test some of these points. Test three, zero. Test right three up two. 
test write five up 100, but they're all gonna work. So that means we shade it to show that all of these guys are gonna work. All of these guys down here are gonna fail. So zero down one's gonna fail, zero down three's gonna fail, left one down two's gonna fail, left two down 50 is gonna fail. All of these points work, all of these points fail. All right, now, what I did is I just reviewed slope intercept form and the X and Y intercepts using graphing um, inequalities, linear inequalities. All right, now, um, Let's do a couple more reviews here before I get into the systems. Anybody have a question? So what's new here is not number one. So number one, we've gone over this extensively. What's new is number two and three. So deciding if the line is dotted or solid and shading. And the shading means those are solutions. So shading means those are all solutions. Now, there's actually a shade feature on the calculator, um, but I really like you to do this by hand. Um, it is important that you know how to do this by hand. So now, these are special graphs. So if you were going to graph this, when you have a single X, it's a vertical line. When you have a single Y, it's a horizontal line. So this is a vertical line through the X axis at two. So what you're going to do again is graph the equation. And this is a vertical line through X. So sometimes people draw it through Y. I never understood that. It's like if it says X, draw it through X. So it says X, draw it through X. Okay, now we go through the steps. Is this solid or dotted? It's dotted because it's strictly greater than. And now when we test a point, we could just use common sense. You don't even need to write it down. Let's think about this. Does it greater than me to the right? Because to the right, wouldn't that be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, those ordered pairs? And aren't these going negative? So we can just use common sense. X greater than means greater this way. So that means all the solutions are over there, all the solutions fail on the left. So with these horizontal and vertical lines, we can totally cheat, just use common sense. If this was X less than two, we would shade to the left of the vertical line. Can I erase this? All right, let's look at one more line. Y less than or equal to one. All right, when you see a Y, that means a horizontal line. And we're gonna graph the equation first. So like I said before, Y means through the Y. So it's through the Y at one. Horizontal line. Remember what I said before, horizontal line, think of the sun on the horizon. Vertical, 
means like a skateboarder, you know, getting vertical means up and down. All right, so now we go through the next step is the solid or dotted. Got it? This one is solid. And now we're going to test a point, but once again, we can use common sense. Does less than mean below or above? So less than, and you remember, you always read the variable. So if the variable is on the right side, you have to be careful. You read the variable first. So this is what I mean. What if this was written like this? Some people say one is greater than y. And if they read it like that, you're going to shade above and get the problem wrong. You read the variable. Remember, y is less than or equal to. You're reading it this way. So just make sure you read the variable first. Okay, so y is less than or equal to 1. Solid line, you're going to shade below. That means all of these solutions work. All of the solutions above the line fail. All the solutions on the line work because it's solid. Okay, let's get into the lesson, okay? Um, you're gonna be responsible for graphing linear, quadratic, and circles. So when you graph a quadratic, you're gonna use transformations. All right, so that means you should know the form and you should know that H moves things left and right, right? Um, you should know A is a vertical stretch of compression and reflection over the x-axis. B is a horizontal stretch of compression, reflection over the y-axis, and K moves the graph up and down. And you must follow the correct order. Oh, actually, I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna do what I go into the system. I'm gonna show you how to graph a circle again. So this is a nice review. Okay, so let's look at the circle. Remember the circle has a plus sign and it has two squares with the same uh, coefficients. So this is a circle. If this was a 3x a squared and a 3y squared, that would be a circle. If this was a 1 half x squared and a 1 half y squared, it would be a circle. If this was a 2 and a 3, it would be an ellipse. So to be a circle, this must be a plus. And they must, you must have two squares. And those coefficients must be the same for it to be a circle. It has to be perfect. All right, so let's take a look at this circle. So what you want to do is follow the directions, graph the equation. And remember with the circle, you need two things. You need the center and the radius. So with this, this really means x minus 0 quantity squared, right? You could write it like that. And this really means y minus 0 quantity squared equals 9. Well, the center is hk. So if you remember the form of the circle was x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. So hk is the center. So H goes with X, K goes with Y. So this is H and K. So your center is zero, zero. Your radius is R. So this is R squared. 
So I'd be careful because this doesn't, this is a perfect square, which is nice, but what if it was a seven? So what if it was a half? What if it was some weird number? So what I would do if I were you, so you don't mess up, I would say that R squared is equal to nine. Take the square root plus or minus R is equal to three because the radius is a length and it must be positive. So I would make sure you do this in case, that, in case that's not obvious. So what if it's a 12? You're gonna have to take the square root of 12 and simplify a radical. Anyhow, here's the graph. So you graph the center at zero, zero. And as far as the radius goes, remember it's halfway across the center of a circle. So what you would do is go right three and put a point up three and put a point, left three and put a point from the center, and down three, put a point. Now, if the center was somewhere else, like at right two up three, you, from, the, from wherever the center is, is where you go up three, right three, down three, left three. Okay, so there's your graph. Okay, now that's just the equation. Now we go to number two. Is it solid or dotted? It's solid. And we're gonna test a point. Well, either the solutions are inside the circle or outside the circle. So I'm gonna test zero, zero into the original. So you have zero squared plus zero squared is that less than or equal to nine? Is zero less than or equal to nine? Yes, it is. So that means zero, zero works and you shade inside the circle. If it failed, shade outside the circle. So this is true. Can you guys see that? All right. So you have those steps written down, so I'm going to erase it. And any questions about the circle? Okay, let's look at a, uh, a system of inequalities. Now, depending on what book you're using, um, sometimes they'll just write the equation. Sometimes they use this notation and they'll write the two um, inequalities. Okay, that's linear. And the other one is 2x plus 3y is greater than or equal to 12. That's also linear. So if you see it at one X squared, it's gonna be a parabola. If you see an X squared and a Y squared, it's gonna be a circle. If you see just an X, that's a vertical line. If you see just a Y, that's a horizontal line. So you do wanna look and see what you have. You wanna recognize, what do I have here? You have two, linear inequalities. Now, let's think about this for a second. With two linear equations, what could happen? The lines could cross, you could have parallel lines, or you could have the same line, right? But there's also shading involved here. So let's see what happens here. Now, this one, I'm going to use slope intercept form because it's easy to solve for y. On this one, I'm not going to use slope intercept form. All right, 
right, so let's do this one first. So we have X minus Y is equal to one. Remember, don't worry about the inequality. I'm gonna solve for Y, so subtract X. And I'm putting the X in front because I wanna use slope intercept form. Now I'm gonna multiply the whole equation by a negative one. And now I'm ready to graph. The slope is up one right one, up one right one, or down one left one, those are equivalent. And the intercept is zero down one. That's just the equation. Over here, I'm gonna graph that equation. I'm not gonna solve for y. It's too much, it's too messy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set x equal to zero, and I'm gonna set y equal to zero and find the x and y intercepts. So when you set x equal to zero, you get three y is equal to 12, solve for y, divide by three, divide by three, so your y intercept is zero up four. Over here, when you set y equal to zero, you get two x is equal to 12. Divide by two, x is equal to six. So six, zero. You know, the, what I just showed you was the quickest graphs. Those were the quickest graphs. All right, so now, basically what's happening here is we have a black graph and we have a pink graph and we're superimposing them on each other. So let's do the black graph first. So we're going to start at zero down one. And I'm going to go up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, up one from the intercept. So up one, right one, up one, right one. I would do three or four points there. So draw your line. Now you test a point. No, we have to decide if it's dotted or solid. Is this dotted or solid? Dotted. That means the solutions cannot be on the line. Okay, so now we're gonna test a point and look at my zero zeros open. So I'm gonna just put a little mark there so I know where I am. And I'm gonna put it into the top. Is zero minus zero less than one? Is zero less than one? True. So that means shade it. Now you're gonna do this lightly. You might have to erase something. Okay, now we're gonna go to the pink graph and try not to look at the black graph. So pretend that the black graph's not there. So you're gonna go zero up four. And you're gonna go right six zero. And you're gonna connect the points. Let me just draw this out a little bit. So I'm gonna connect the points. You know, like I said, try not to look at the black graph. So now I'm gonna test a point and guess what I'm gonna test? I'm gonna put it right there. I'm gonna test zero, zero into this. So two times zero plus three times zero, is that greater than or equal to 12? Two times zero is zero, plus three times zero is zero. Is zero greater than or equal to 12? False. So that means don't shade on this side of the pink line. So that failed. Right? So if that failed, that means shade on the other side of the line. Okay, now here's what you have to do. The solutions. I'm going to try to use green. It might be too dark. I'll try to use turquoise. 
Okay, you see how this area right here is just black? Can you guys see this? This area right here is just black. Those aren't solutions. Those are only solutions to one of them. In fact, it's the solution to the black one. You see these pink solutions? Those are only solutions to the pink. What you want is solutions to both. So you see this black and pink up here? That's what you want. So let me, let me be specific. This boundary is dotted. This boundary is solid. And the answers are in here. And you want to make it really clear where you know that you know where the answers are. So to sum it up, the answers are not in the black. The answers are not in the pink. The answers are in the black and pink. So let me let me clear. Let me be clear. Every ordered pair in the blue is a solution. So every ordered pair on this part of the line that's dotted doesn't work. Every ordered pair on this part of the line works. Every ordered pair in the blue works. Zero, zero fails, right three, zero fails. Everything in this pink fails. Everything in this black fails. The only thing that works is what's shaded. All right, are there any questions? Okay, that was probably the easiest problem you're gonna see. So this was a system of two equations. If you were working for a company, you might have five or six equations. You might have an, in, an inequality that's representing the cost to make something, an inequality for the materials, an inequality for what you have to pay your employees, an inequality for the machinery. And then your maximum profit would be in the graph somewhere. So where everything crosses, would, you would be looking at your profit. That's how companies are successful. They don't just sit and guess and hope, you know, that a, a Nike shoe is going to sell. They don't do stuff like that. They use math to figure out all of their, um, their inequalities and their constraints. Okay, anybody want to ask me a question about this? Okay, let's do a little harder one then. Let's do a linear and a quadratic. So let's talk about this for a second. What are all the things that could happen to a line? And a quadratic. Well, a line could completely miss it. That means no solutions. A line could be tangent to it, which means one solution. Or a line could cross through it for two solutions. So there can't be three solutions. So these are your possibilities. No solutions, one solution, or two solutions with a quadratic and a line. All right, so let's look at, at, a, at a system with two inequalities. One's linear and one is a problem. Here we go. So they want us to solve So is this your quadratic or your line? And here's the other one. X minus y is greater than or equal to 2. So the first equation is a quadratic, and you should recognize right away what this is. This is a quadratic shifted down four, right? 
So if this quadratic is shifted down four and your parent points are zero, zero, um, remember your parent points for the quadratic? Remember how we put them into X squared, the parent? We had um, left one up one, zero, zero, and right one up one for the parent points. And if you shifted these down four, one minus four is negative three, down four would be negative four, down four would be negative three. So there's your points. So let's graph it. Remember that we're using transformations to do a quick graph. If you wanna make a table, that's fine, but you may not be able to complete any future tests. You've got, you gotta be able to do quick graphs and notice it's in the form. Remember you have to follow a specific order too. We went over that. All right. Here we go. Left one down three. Zero down four. Right one down three. And there's your parabola. Now we decide is the boundary, don't call it a line, it's not a line. Is the boundary dotted or solid? So it's dotted, which means the solutions cannot be on the boundary. Now we test a point. You know, my favorite point is zero, zero. So either you're gonna shade inside the parabola or shade outside the parabola. So here we go. So put it in here, this one, your Y is zero greater than zero squared minus four is zero greater than negative four. Yes. Think of the number line. So zero is on the right of negative four, so it is bigger. That means shade him and all his friends. There. All right, let's go to the next one, which is linear. And I'm gonna use slope intercept form because it's easy to solve for y. So you're, I'm gonna subtract X. Oh, we don't need the inequality, right? I'm sorry. We just need the equation right now. Don't worry about the inequality. Subtract X, multiply by a negative, multiply by a negative, multiply by a negative. The slope, is up one, right one, or down one, left one, and the intercept is zero down two. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, now remember, try not to look at the black graph. So you go zero down two, and we go up one, right one, up one, right one, or down one, left one, and draw your line. Now we decide is the line dotted or solid? It's solid. And we test a point. I'm going to test zero, zero again. So I'm testing it into this. So is zero minus zero greater than or equal to two? Is zero greater than or equal to two? False. So that means don't shade it. So don't shade it means shade down here. So don't shade it means shade on the other side. Okay, now we have to see where our solutions are. Our solutions are not in the black. Our solutions are not in the pink. <clears throat> our solutions are in the black and pink. So can you see this little piece right here? That's where our solutions are. So this is the answer. This boundary is solid. This is dotted. 
started. And the shading is in this little slice in here. So that's where our solutions are. Solid boundary, dotted boundary, dotted boundary. So it's a little slice. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay, I'm not going to be able to finish this lesson, but I'm going to do one more problem. This is a system of inequalities. Uh, they're both linear. So if you're wondering, well, why? Usually we solve, we write the solutions. Can't write the solutions. You have to show them graphically. It's two, these are infinite solutions in here. And you can't write them. So the only way to show the solutions right now is to show them graphically. So this is linear. Inequality, this is linear. Inequality. So both are linear, and I'm not going to solve for y in either one of them. So the first one, 2x plus 3y, just write the equation. I'm going to set x equal to 0. When I set x equal to 0, I get 3y is equal to 6. Divide by 3. The y intercept is 0 up 2. Set y equal to 0. So that zeroes that out. So 2x is equal to 6 divided by 2. x is equal to 3. So there's that one. Check this out. You're going to graph 0 up 2. You're going to graph right 3, 0. There's your line. Quick graph. You're going to test a point, or I'm sorry, see if it's dotted or solid. It's solid. I'm going to test 0, 0, my favorite point. But you don't have to test that one if you don't want. So to go back up here is two times zero plus three times zero greater than or equal to six. Is zero greater than or equal to six? False, don't shade it. So don't means don't. So what else does don't mean? Don't means shade the other side of the line. Do the pink one. You're going to write the equation. I'm going to use the same method. Set x equal to 0. 3y is equal to 0. Divide by 3. 0 over 3 is 0, isn't it? Set y equal to 0. So you have um, 2x is equal to zero, divide by two. So you can't use this method. Can't use it, because you only have one point. So how do you graph the line with one point? You don't. 
So I tried to use this method, but I can't because you can't graph a line with one point. So I'm forced to use slope intercept form. There's your equation, solve for y. So subtract 2x. Always wet. I'm crazy. Just y. Yeah. Subtract 2x. 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 0. Divide by 3. Divide by three, divide by three, divide by three. So the slope is down two, right three, down two, right three, or up two, left three. And the intercept is zero, zero. I meant to write that in pink, I'm sorry. So this should be in pink. So now we, our intercept is zero, zero. Go up two, left three. Up two, left three, I'm out of room. So I'm gonna go down two, right three, down two, right three, and draw your line. Is this line dotted or solid? It's solid. Test a point, you can't test zero, zero. So I'm just gonna pick right one, zero. Pick any one you want. Go back up here. So you have two times X, which is one, plus three times zero. Is that less than or equal to zero? So that's two plus zero. Is two less than or equal to zero? False. So that means don't shade him. So don't shade him means shade here. So tell me, what are your solutions? Go ahead, I'm listening. Where do you see black and pink intersecting? Hello? Where do you see black and pink intersecting? They don't intersect? So. Yes, they don't intersect. So this is what you would write. No intersection. No solutions. Or you could put the empty set. So on this one, no human being is going to understand this. So you would want to write no solutions or the empty set. Go ahead, Katrina. Do you have something? No. Are you sure? I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Okay, go ahead. I'll take, uh, okay, how about this? I'm going to turn the recorder off. Um, and those of you who don't have any questions, I hope you have a great weekend. Um, good luck on the test. Make sure and let me know um, if you want to do some type of review over the weekend. Um, I can't read your mind, so you're going to have to contact me. Um, but have a good weekend. So I'm just going to turn the recorder off and um, you can stick around and ask me questions if you'd like.